from whom all blessings flow. We are so blessed and we thank God that you have joined us in our worship experience this morning. For God is great and he is greatly to be praised. And that is our desire today is to exalt the name of the Lord is to give him all the glory and praise that he so deserved. So let us pray. Our Father, our God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come this day to say thank you we thank you, God, for life, health, and strength. We thank you for this opportunity to be able to come and to share with our viewers who are with us this morning. God, as we come today, we're asking you, oh God, to move mightily in our worship experience this morning. Touch, Father, heal, deliver, restore. And we know that you're able to do this through the songs, through the prayers, through the preach word. So, Father, we invite you in and we ask that you will have your way in this moment of worship and fellowship together. Bless us now. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, we are so delighted that you're with us this morning. We praise God for all the great things that he has done and is doing in our lives. As we begin this week, we are celebrating and we are looking back and we are thanking God as we observe Juneteenth. In other words, we are looking back and we are thanking God for how he's brought us and where he has brought us from. And so today, the message is going to be a little bit about some history of where we come from, where the Lord has brought us from, and also where we are desiring God to take us. And that is by way of his love, his grace, his mercy, and his justice. You know, it only takes one little spark to get a fire started. Just a spark. And as I was thinking about one spark that can touch something dry like grass or leaves, and it can start a fire that can spread and grow and grow and can almost become out of control. As I was thinking about the spark, last week in our nation, there were fires burning in virtually every major city. The spark that started these fires and the reaction of thousands of demonstrations came from the death of, yes, George Floyd. That name has become very familiar to us. Death while in police custody. Americans and people all over the world have expressed strong emotions on seeing the video of George Floyd suffocating under the knee of a police officer. It is horrifying. And some have been traumatized and physically sickened by seeing this video. This video comes weeks after the video of the lynching of Ahmaud Arbery. 
And then just a little further, recently, the life of Breonna Taylor. And if we look at the list, the list goes on and on and on and on of unjustifiable murders or killings or the taking of life. The reaction of people in protest wasn't really from a spark. Because this has been a smoldering fire that had been burning for years. But there was something different this time. As the world witnessed and looked on to see a man struggling to breathe air that all of us take literally for granted as we just walk around and breathe for eight minutes and 46 seconds we watched and we observed a man struggling grasp, grasp, grasping for air trying to breathe there was something different about this one there was something different to visually see this man struggling and pleading for his life and begging to breathe air yes, yes. and then finally we watched George breathe no more Right in front of our eyes, George Floyd was dead. To see this caused something to rise up in people as never before. Yes, yes, there were those who, who exploited this peaceful demonstrations to promote violence and theft. But over time, over time, they began to get weeded out. And we began to see peaceful demonstrations all over the world. And still today, there, are, there is a strong presence of peaceful demonstrations by those whose hearts were moved by compassion. There are those who have a sincere desire to address the evil of racism. In cities, towns, villages, and suburbs all around the world. Yes, all around the world. There are people of goodwill. Young people, older people, white people, black people, brown people, men and women all came together, joining and banding their hands together, banding their voices together, singing together, shouting together, carrying signs that are printed in bold letters that say, I can't breathe. Signs that say, hands up, don't shoot. Signs that says, we are better than this. Signs that says, in racism, the voices of many diverse individuals came together and said, I am a human being. Signs that said, no justice, no peace. So what is all the ruckus about? What, 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 what disturbed so many people to the point that they would take to the streets for days and days by thousands and ten thousands? Because there is a desire and there is a drive that is causing people to seek justice. Justice. I researched the word justice. And as I was looking, researching the word justice, they, they, there were many confusing definitions that, 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 that was just somewhat complicated. And then I found one that kind of made sense. And it says that justice means that People behave in a way that is fair, equal, and balanced for everyone. People seeking and behaving in a way that is fair and equal and balanced for everyone. Reality check. For the most part, most of us know what is right and what is wrong. Most of us know also that as we live in this society, we put on blinders sometimes, but the reality is there is a double standard depending on who you are. Most of us know that there are systems in place that elevate some while oppressing and depressing and holding down others. But I thank God that there are people 
of all races. There are people of all genders who have decided and banded together upon this time in their lives and decided that enough is enough. Most, if not all of us, would agree that using force or fraud to exploit the vulnerable, that that is evil. Most of us understand, and we carry a sense within us, a sense of right and wrong. We carry a conviction that oppressors should be punished and that the weak should be protected. We all know what justice is. Justice in its simply forms mean to set things right, to treat people right. George Floyd's public execution opened up the eyes of many, but it also reminded others who have been experiencing this all of their lives that there is something very wrong, there is something unequal, there is something imbalanced about the way some people treat others. And our mission in this hour that we are in, in this season in which we are living, is to be on the side of justice. Not just for our sake, but that is what God desire is that we all experience justice in our lives. Yes, yes. God desire is for equality and justice in this land. Yes, I said God desires yes, yes, yes. justice. Yes. Let me read a couple of scriptures that imply not only do we the people desire justice, but God is justice and God is seeking justice. Deuteronomy. 32 and 4 it says, he is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways. You hear that? All of his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright, and listen to this, and just is he. And then Psalm 89 and 14 says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. To honestly deal with this issue of justice, we as Christians must take a hard look at ourselves. The answer for all Christians should be very simple and easy. As Christ followers, the answer is simple because justice should be a part of our Christian character. Our sense of justice is imparted to us by God, the creator. He created this, 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 this sense in us to know when things are right as well as when things are wrong. It is inside of us. He is a loving God. He is a kind God. He is a merciful God. But God is also a righteous God, a holy God, and he is a just God. You know, I, 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 sometimes, I don't know, I, I really get confused when I see Bible-toting, Scripture-talking, Holy Ghost-filled Christians who seemingly have a different standard of justice depending on who is the subject of that justice. I can hardly believe that some Christians will join in with those who oppress the weak and the vulnerable. They agree, they support, and they join in with those who divide rather than unite. I get confused and I wonder what God are we serving? Is it the same one? Yes. Because the God that I serve, the God that I understand as I read in the scripture, it's the God that loves all people. Yes. It's the God that lifts up everybody and never press anyone down. It's the God that never turned anyone away. Because everywhere I look in the scriptures, our God is a just God. It is a part of his character, which means he is always just. He cannot be unjust, and he defines and sets the standards of what justice is. We hear, we hear with our ears that God is love, that God is holy, more often than we hear that God is just. 
And we may be readily to agree that God sets the standard for love and holiness, but we also must understand that God also sets the standard for justice. Pursuing biblical justice means that we follow God's way to make right those things which are wrong. And right is not in the eyes of the beholder. We look to the scriptures to determine what God says is right. God's word says what? Love your what? Your neighbor as yourself. And if we're loving our neighbors as ourselves, our neighbor is not just the one who is physically beside us, but our neighbor is anyone that we come in contact with and communicate with in the world. True justice, true justice starts by seeing people as God sees people, recognizing that we are all created in the image of God. How does God see you? How does God see me? God sees us as one that he created, one that he loves, one that he will always lift up, one that he will not turn his back on. And when one is falling down, God sees us and he picks us up. That's justice. That's God's love. Pursuing justice starts and it continues with the foundation of prayer because we know in the midst of all of this, this battle is not ours but it belongs to the Lord. Pursuing justice involves time and sacrifice. It means stepping outside of your comfort zone. Sometimes the decisions that you make may not be popular with the people that's in your circle, but sometimes you have to step outside of your circle if you're going to please God in serving and lifting up others. It means walking in wisdom and not jumping in haphazardly and foolishly. Our just God leads and we follow as he empowers us through the power of the Holy Spirit. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that this is nothing new. It's not a new mandate. It is not a cultural fad or something that is simply a trend in our today's society. But when we look in the scriptures Throughout the Old and the New Testament, God calls for justice is very clear. Psalm 82 and 3, look at what he says. He says, give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. In other words, God is saying because someone is going through or perhaps someone has, 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 was born in a particular situation that we don't ordinarily just, just look down on them because of their situation, but we should be what? Lifting them up, helping to set things right in their lives. Isaiah 1 and 17 says, learn to do good, Mm -hmm. seek justice, Mm -hmm. correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless and please the widow's cause. You want the closest example of justice? Look at yourself. If you really wanna know, The reason I say that is because what? We all are born in sin. Yet the Bible says that no sin goes unpunished. And that is just and that is right. But God brings justice when he punishes humankind for for their sins. And the scripture also says that the wages of sin is what? Death. That's justice. It was God's justice that a price had to be paid for my sins and for your sins. But because God loved us so much that he would sacrifice his only son on my half and your behalf. In other words, God's justice did not change. Because of man's and humanity's sin, there had to be the death of a human life that would be the sacrifice for our sins. And that's where grace comes in on our behalf. That's where God's grace come in on our behalf. We do not have to look far to see that Jesus is our standard of righteousness because he died in our place. And because he died in our place, we are now justified Justice has pleaded our case, not because we were so right, but it was because we were so wrong and that Jesus was so right and that he was willing to die on Calvary's cross for our sins. 
Jesus Christ lived a perfect life, a sinless life. He died a sacrificial death, rose again to make things right that was wrong. It is because of Jesus' work on Calvary's cross that we are now justified and we are made right with God. And Jesus demonstrates this beautiful example in the New Testament. Jesus was always living and reaching out with compassion. He was always extending justice to those who needed to be lifted up. He pursued justice physically when the leper was, was, was sick and came before him. He, 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 he set things right. He touched him. And he cleansed them of a leprosy. When the woman was caught in adultery, Jesus didn't walk away and left her standing to be stoned to death. But justice pleaded a case. He stood in the gap and said, which of you have not sinned? Throw the first stone. That's justice. He pleaded the case. As we look at the life of Jesus and the mandate that's given throughout the scriptures, it is clear that we as children of God, as followers of Christ, we are called to do justice. We are called to take action and confront evil. We are called to lift up the vulnerable and make that which is wrong right. We are called, we are called to take a stand to do that which is right. One day, one day, one day, one day, there will be the perfect justice carried out by a perfect, holy, and righteous God. But in the meantime, in the meantime, evil is pervasive throughout this world. So what is our responsibility? To seek justice. Our responsibility is to engage ourselves in the causes that are injustice around us to protect the vulnerable. We must fight for those who are oppressed. We must walk alongside those who are wounded. And we must point them to the one that can heal their physical body as well as their sin-sick soul. We can point them to the one who's able to restore them and bring restoration into their lives. We can point them to the one who redeems and saves us from all of our sins. If we're seeking justice today, we look to God. We look to the scriptures, for it will guide us unto all truth. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord, for your wonderful mercy, your wonderful grace, and for your justice. God, we thank you for making things right in our lives. When there was so much that was wrong, God, you sent your son. You sent your son in our place that he might take on what we were supposed to take on. We were supposed to take the nails in our hands and feet. We were supposed to take the beating all night long. We were supposed to hang there until we breathe no more. But you sent your son, Jesus Christ. And God, we thank you. We thank you today. And so, Lord, as we come today, there may be one who don't know you as their personal Savior. We invite you, O oh God, to touch them. We invite them, O oh God, to reach out towards you and surrender their lives to you this day simply by saying, I am a sinner. I know I have not lived right. And so I come to you today, Jesus, to surrender my life to you. I give you my all in all. And say, Lord, I want to be a Christian. I know that Jesus died for my sins. And I accept him as my personal savior today. And Lord, if they pray in that prayer, if you pray that prayer today, Jesus is in your life. Accept him and be changed. We thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
trials come on every hand. I feel like go, going on. I feel like pressing my I feel like pressing my way. The trials come on every hand. I feel like oh, when on. Trials come on every hand. I feel like go going on. Though trials come on every. Good morning again. I wanted to take this opportunity, Mrs. Bruce and I, to simply share some words with the members of Beulah AME Church. You know, it's been some time. I believe it's been several months. I believe March 15th was the last time that we were together here in our worship service in this sanctuary. And much have gone on in many of our lives. And so today I just wanted to just, just, just speak a word of encouragement to you. I know that there have been many ups and downs in your lives, but we want you to know that Mrs. Bruce and I, that we have been certainly praying for you, lifting you up in our prayers daily, and believing that God is carrying us through this time that we are distant or somewhat separated from one another. I do want you to know that the love of God will always be with you. And he will certainly carry you through. We want you to know that you are certainly in our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And we cannot wait. We cannot wait till the time come when we will be able to come back together in this sanctuary to worship God together. That we will see each other smiling faces. We know that time is coming. Yeah. But in the meantime, we ask that you will do those things that are necessary to stay safe. But in the meantime, just don't waste time. For this is precious time. God has allowed this to be so. So utilize this time to build up your faith through the reading of the scriptures, the reading of the word, time and prayer. And as you do that, you will continue to develop your spiritual formation. As we go through this time, we pray that you have been enjoying the services that we've been sharing with you on Sunday mornings and through the conference calls and the Zoom meetings and all the things that we've been interacting uh, through this way of new technology. We are praying that as you continue to go through, remember that God loves you and that God cares for you. And we love you too. Amen. 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 God bless you. And we hope to see you very, very soon. We love you. We love you, Beulah. Thank you so much for joining us this morning in our worship experience. Please, if you have the opportunity and desire to do so, please, you are willing to share with us in our ministry by gifts, donations, through mailing, as presented there. Also, you may download the app Givelify and look for Beulah AME Church. Look for the Beulah logo. We would love to have you support our ministries as the Lord leads you. Again, God bless you and have a wonderful day.